How's it going guys? In this tutorial series, I'm going to show you how to integrate Stripe into your website. And what Stripe can do is it can enable you to charge people's credit cards on your website. Um, there's a few different ways to go about this. The easy way is uh, integrating checkout into your website. So with checkout, all you're going to do is you're just going to paste in this simple form right here. And then you're going to get a button like this, pay with card. And then when your users click on pay with card, um, they're going to get this light box popping out. They're going to fill in their details and then Stripe is going to handle all of the rest. And as long as they have a valid credit card um, with money on it, you are going to um, su successfully charge their card. Um, the other way, which is a little bit more difficult, but not too bad, and that offers us a lot of flexibility is using a custom form. So using a custom form, you can use their form right here. You can use your own form. You can um, you know, add other elements to the form. But this is going to allow you to seamlessly integrate Stripe into your site, um, you know, using your own design and whatnot. And the really interesting thing about the way Stripe does this is um, it's going to be very secure because um, you'll notice all of these inputs right here, they don't have a name attribute. And because they don't have a name attribute, um, it's impossible for us to post this value to our server. So because the sensitive credit card information is never touching our server, you will never be you know, liable or responsible um, for, that, for that information, for those credit card details. So the way this works is all of these inputs have a data attribute like a data stripe number, data stripe CVC, and Stripe's JavaScript is going to use this as a hook in order to get the value input by the user. And then it's going to send that off to their server using Ajax. And then what it's going to do is it's going to very quickly, it's going to add another hidden input to this form, which is called token. And it's going to place the token in there and it's going to post the token to your server. Okay, so that token is a representation of that customer's credit card on Stripe server. So Stripe's going to have in their database the credit card number and um, the expiry and all the things like that. And that is going to um, be associated with a token number. So you are only going to get the token, but you can use this token to charge their credit card immediately, or you can use this token to create a customer object. And then you can store this customer object um, in your database, and you can use that to you know, doing recurring charges um, with your with this user. So to charge them again in the future, you can use um, that customer ID, which you'll get um, through the process of the token, but you'll never actually have the credit card information on your servers. So if your server ever gets compromised, um, that hacker won't be able to get any um, sensitive credit card information. So in order to get started with Stripe, um, you'll first need to create an account with them. Um, I have one already. I think we can. you can just click sign up right here. And it's going to ask you for a bit of um, basic information. Um, as of this recording, I think Stripe is available in uh, the US, Canada, and Ireland and England. So um, I don't know that you have to be from those countries, but I'm pretty sure you need to have a bank account from those countries in order to do this. So um, if you're from one of those countries, um, sign up here on Stripe. And if not, uh, you should check Stripe's website often because they are expanding very quickly. And I think they'll be available in a lot more countries soon. So sign up on Stripe. And once you sign up on Stripe, you are going to be able to um, use a test account or you're going to, be able to use a real account. So most of the time in this tutorial, we are going to be using the test account. One really great part of Stripe is their um, admin area, which is called the dashboard. And in the dashboard, um, there is a, there's a button at the top, which is live and test. So you can see all the things that's happened with your Stripe account in a live environment. You can see I've done some, um, some live tests with my own credit card so far. Uh, but most of the things I've done has been under the test account. So if I go to my dashboard here, You'll see I've charged, uh, it looks like, oh, over $1,000 in Canadian. So um, I have a Canadian bank account set up with Stripe. and But of course, all of this money is, this is just Monopoly money um, because this is the test account. So all of my testing I've done so far um, has added up to this amount. So 
This is a really easy to use interface. And one place that I use a lot here is the logs. So whenever you're doing requests, whether you just uh, made a request to their server or you made a charge or you generated a token or you created a new customer or a charge, um, you can see all the details here. Um, it's listed chronologically. So let's just look at this last one. Um, it looks like I charged the test card. And here um, you can see the amount that I charged, the currency that I charged in, um, that customer's ID. Okay, so um, in here, this is the this is the charge information. So that charge ID, um, a timestamp of when it was created, and a whole bunch of information right here. So um, this is really convenient um, in order to see you know the things that have been you know successfully posted to Stripe, and um, you know once you get familiar with this, you will um, you'll you'll realize how easy it is to use. So there's a number of different ways that you can charge people's credit cards um, using Stripe if you're using a custom form. And you can do it with a lot of different server-side programming languages with like PHP, Ruby on Rails, um, Python, and Java, and all kinds of stuff. So um, you can choose whatever language you want to do this, but um, in this series we're going to be using PHP. And we're not only going to be doing PHP, but I'm going to do it inside Laravel's PHP framework. Um, I've used Laravel before. I think it's really good. Um, it uses a lot of the latest things from PHP 5.3. So you can use whatever framework you want, but we're going to use um, Laravel during this one. And in the next video, I'm going to go over briefly um, how to uh, install Laravel um, on your computer.